Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today I was about to do something very, very painful, which was to go through a CBR article recently brought to my attention, which claims to, quote unquote, predict every Straw Hat's final battle. But instead of torturing both you and me, most importantly me, I've decided to just cover this topic myself. But spoiler alert, in their estimation, Sanji's final fight will be against Stroysen for the sole reason that they are both chefs. Good stuff. Now let's all forget about that, because today is fun for another reason, being that it is my birthday. So please do feel free to say happy birthday by hitting the good old birthday button, which will actually give you the gift of regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And if you've already hit the birthday button, then please do feel free to hit the secondary birthday button. And if you've already hit that one, then please do hit the tertiary birthday button. There is always going to be a birthday button that you haven't pressed. But moving swiftly onwards, One Piece does have an ever increasing air of finality about it that makes discussions like this a lot more reasonable than they probably would have been 10 or even five years ago, because chances are by this stage, we have been introduced to the key figures of the climax of the series. So let's go ahead and predict who each and every Straw Hat member will ultimately face off against. And we're going to start with by far the most difficult member being Nami. Now, why is Nami the most difficult? Well, it's because she doesn't fight, at least not anymore. Or I guess at least not in the traditional sense. Long gone are the days when Nami would be included in the one-on-one -on -one matchup systems that we saw in arcs like Alabaster and a Slobby. And while people might have romanticized thoughts about Nami duking it out with say, Katarina Devon or something, I'm starting to feel like it's increasingly likely that Nami's final fight will be against a, uh, well, a less than noteworthy character. Which is ridiculous because as I often state, Nami has access to one of the most raw, destructive powers within the entire crew. It just gets used as more of a situational or assist ability rather than for Shonen fun times. In fact, Shonen fun times with Nami is very much just about bathing, I guess. So it's honestly very, very difficult to pick a final opponent for Nami because even if we take the established fan beliefs that the Blackbeard Pirates will be that ultimate final enemy thing, it's pretty incredibly difficult to see Nami going up against any of them. I mean, they're mostly X level six prisoners been pulled down or just wildly powerful people in their own right. It's also equally difficult to see Nami's matchup if the Marines end up being the final enemy because I don't know, what Admiral or Vice Admiral does she end up taking on? Probably none of them and she may or may not just be relegated to cleaning up fodder. So to start things out, I will be making the bold prediction that Nami's final fight will not be against any character of grand relevance. Bit of a downer to start this video, but let's head in the complete opposite direction now with Zoro, because he has two, perhaps even three, very natural final opponents. And the one I most often see people jump straight towards is that of Shiryu, primarily because he is also an individual who uses sharp metal to fight. And that's fairly reasonable. If we were talking about pure matchups with the Blackbeard Pirates, then it's hard to disagree. So hard that I, in fact, agree. But I don't think we should necessarily conflate the whole Blackbeard eventuality with the concept of a final fight, especially in Zoro's case, because I 100% believe that his final battle will be against the one and only Dracul Mihawk, mostly because I just feel that's the natural end to his story. Although in the past, I've also had some other ideas like when he becomes the world's greatest swordsman, he might be challenged by Toshigi and their fight would mirror Zoro versus Kuina back in their childhood, except this time Zoro is the one proving wildly superior. But Mihawk is the name of the Zoro game, which means I guess we should call it the Mihawk game, but that's what I'm going with here for Zoro. Let's go long now and take a look at Usopp. Now his final fight has been pretty much set in stone by fans ever since the very concept of Van Alga was introduced and for good reason, because it would be just so damn fitting to have a duel between snipers. It really is at the point where I would be so unreasonably upset if this matchup never happens because snipers seem to be a pretty rare thing to actually see in Pirate Crews, weirdly enough, and the parallel is just so strong. And of course, we need to ask ourselves once again, as with everyone, if the Blackbeard Pirates will be the ultimate final enemies for this idea to work. When it comes to Usopp though, I think it's a bit different because even if there was some final task to complete post Blackbeard, i.e. something well government related, then that's still fine because Usopp is something of a, a middling character when it comes to combat. You know, he isn't someone like Nami who doesn't get a chance to leap into a fight all that much, but he also isn't a character like Zoro who is legally mandated to fight in every arc he's featured in. So Usopp could very comfortably take on Van Alger and then just chill and do his own Usopp thing if need be, for what remains of One Piece. So that's why I'm fairly confident in calling Van Alga Usopp's ultimate 
final opponent, dude. Let's get super now though with Cyborg bruh, Mr. Frankie. And despite joining the crew fairly late, he does see quite a bit of the odd action, most famously being the MVP of the entire Water 7 saga, managing to take out two members of CP9 actually, a feat equaled only by his future captain, Monkey D. Luffy. But on Fishman Island, Frankie got his standard battle moment, defeating Icarus, and on Dressrosa, he engaged in my favorite Frankie fight thus far against Senor Pink. So I certainly do not see this mechanical man being left out of the action Nami style, but the big question is who will become the victim of a trademark robot fisting? Well, the temptation is to think big, like say San Juan Wolf style big. Someone's gonna have to take this mofo down. And I think that Frankie is well suited for the task of facing off against giants, at least more so than most of the crew. But I'm also leaning pretty heavily towards the whole Jesus Burgess camp, and that's purely personality based. Burgess is large, loud, and proud, just like Frankie himself. And I think the two of them would actually see eye to eye in a weird way in combat. But I'm also torn because in the event that the Marines are the final enemy, then Frankie seems like a good opponent for a figure like say, John Giant, or maybe even the entire giant squad, or maybe an entire legion of pacifista to stay in keeping with the cyborg theme. Whatever it is, it's got to be big, but because we're predicting here, I'm gonna go weird and I'll say that it will be Jesus Burgess. Fully prepared to be incredibly wrong on that one. But then from super big to super small, Chopper is here now and he wants to fight. How adorable. Can we give it to him? Maybe. Chopper has a bit of a Usopp situation happening here, where he has long since been slated by the ever wise and always correct fan base as the natural opponent for Doc Q. Why would that be? Well, because they are both both doctors, and that's literally it. And I guess it does make some degree of sense because Chopper does have exceptional pride as a doctor, and he will very willingly and vehemently fight against anyone abusing that study, like say Dr. Hogback, and to a lesser degree, Caesar Clown. And this might just be because we don't know enough about Doc Q yet, other than the fact that he does fight using a scythe, very cool. But he feels very weird as an opponent to me, and not someone that Chopper's abilities are quite narratively catered for. To which I, of course, mean Monster Point. Although yeah, Chopper can use his other forms, nice and strategically, but if we are talking final battles, then this boy is becoming a monster. In which case for the Blackbeard Pirate scenario, I'd be looking at San Juan Wolf again, or perhaps even Vasco Shot, because that guy is pretty massive. And I would keep it focused on the Blackbeard Pirates because in the event of the Marine-based finale option, I just don't know if Chopper would have a major role, kind of like most of his time in the new world. So for the sake of predictions, let's say Vasco Shot and call it a day. All right, moving on, we're going to take a look at Carrot. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, she's not a crew. Remember. Robin is though, and rather unfortunately, Robin suffers from a bit of the old Nami syndrome. In fact, she suffers from it even worse than Nami does, having not had a proper one-on-one -on -one fight since Yama during the Skypier arc. So we should probably rename it Robin Syndrome. And to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of hope for Robin in a final conflict, because a lot of that was taken away by Dress Rosa, where she was just relegated to protecting Rebecca, and it's very much starting to feel like that's her natural role going forward as well. Plus, I suppose Robin's ultimate story isn't intrinsically combat linked. This one is here to drop bombs, historical bombs specifically, to reveal to us the great extent of the truth behind the Void Century. So just as with Nami, I'm going to predict that Robin's final fight will not be against anyone of note, and it will probably just consist of a something Fleur clutch. Now going full fish, we have Jinbei, who is fairly tricky simply because he's such a versatile combatant. Jinbei doesn't get locked into certain areas like Usopp with sniping or Zoro with sharp things. Jinbei can more or less be trusted to do anything or take down anyone, which is why this process is a bit painful with him. When it comes to the Blackbeard Pirates, I could see him taking on anyone who wasn't Van Alga or Blackbeard himself. Anyone else actually seems like some pretty fair game. And just to throw a very left field idea into things, I would be immediately interested in Lafitte, if only for the fact that he can fly. So Jinbei versus Lafitte would be a showdown of sky versus sea, which seems pretty cool. And I'm afraid that pretty cool is the best I have here because Jinbei doesn't have a particularly meaningful opponent to take on. Even if we look at the Marines, there isn't a whole lot of substance we can land on. It could be anyone, it could be no one, it could be Lafitte. So we're gonna go with him. With Brooke, I have a much better feeling though, and I guess I'll point out at this stage that the CBR article predicted that Brooke's final fight would be against one Scratch Men Apu, which actually if it was one Scratch Men Apu, it would be Scratch Man Apu. So it's Scratch Men. Plural. Huh. Which is, uh, look, I think it's pretty incredibly off the mark. And they're obviously only paired together because they are both musical fiends. Which isn't to say a showdown like this could not happen in Wano, but Wano is far from the final battle of the series. So with Brook, I'm actually going to propose that he stack up against Doc Q. A clash between a man who is undead versus a man who seems like he is perpetually dying. And from the very, very painfully little that we know, I do like the idea of seeing their fighting styles blend, since both of them use long slender blades 
kids and their personalities are just so weird. Doc Q also seems to have comical mobility issues, just like Brooke, which would be quite fun. And yeah, like unless it was Lafitte, I don't particularly see a better option for our musical skeleton. I mean, maybe asking to see Katarina Devon's panties, if that counts as a fight. But actually speaking of panties, we now make our way to Sanji, who is also a female enthusiast, which paves the way to a very nice crack idea to make his final fight against Katarina Devon, and maybe even make it the first and only time that Sanji has had to take down a woman. I feel like Sanji Sanji fans would be pretty upset with that as a final fight though. Not that Oda really cares. With Sanji though, one of my biggest hopes has always been that he will somehow be able to take on Kizaru at some stage and defeat the man who can kick people at the speed of light. It does admittedly feel like quite a bit of a stretch though. So I'm probably less than comfortable using that as a prediction, which leaves us with maybe the awkward area of Jesus Burgess. The reasoning being that Burgess is one of the more prominent members of the Blackbeard Pirates and someone who seems, I guess, worthy of facing off against a Straw Hat Monster Trio member. I mean, at the moment, any of the other members might seem like a bit of a cop out without having gotten to know them first, but we do have quite a problem here because I also predicted that Frankie would be facing off against Burgess. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess by very poorly thought out process of elimination, that leaves us with Avalo Pizarro. So yeah, sure, let's, let's go with that. But finally, we have Luffy, whose natural opponent would appear to be, of course, Blackbeard. Or does it? As the main character, Luffy has a fair few options open. Blackbeard might be the ultimate obstacle to becoming the Pirate King, but is he the ultimate obstacle to One Piece as a whole? And that's not so clear. Other decent candidates would be someone like Sakazuki, who Luffy has very personal business against, and he does represent the collective that is the Marines, the primary antagonistic force of the entire series. Although some people have even posited that Luffy needs to be the one to take down Eam, and going even further down the rabbit hole, there are those who enjoy the evil Shanks and evil dragon theories. You know what crackpot idea I like though? In all seriousness, I love the idea of Luffy versus Kobe, mostly because it gives a nice bookend to the series. Kobe was the first ally Luffy met on his adventure and the first person that Luffy profoundly impacted. And to this day is still striving towards his goal of becoming a Marine Admiral as a result. So how's this for a final fight? After everything is said and done, you know, Blackbeard, Vanquish, Sakazuki, Squash, Eam disposed of in the garbage he belongs. Pirate King Luffy faces off against Fleet Admiral Kobe in a battle that will be remembered for decades to come. And a lot of you are probably going to hate this idea because it's not the like giant shonen climax that we mostly have in mind when it comes to end fights, but that's the whole idea. It would act as more of an epilogue rather than a central feature of the series. And because I really don't want to give the boring Blackbeard answer, I am going to say that Kobe will be Luffy's final fight in One Piece. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.